Hey guys, August Saint here, coming to you some more Final Fantasy, and I want to talk about the Sage today. Basic Bitch Sage Guide, level 70, let's go. So for starters, the Sage is a, a healer that's really mobile, it has a good mobility skill, and it's also got a lot of instant cast heals, and it's really just an OGCD healer kind of. It's not really a hard casting healer where you stand there and heal a lot, like uh, say White Mage for example, is like, I mean not really that much, but yeah, it's uh, more like a mobile instant casty spammy kind of dps healer so if that's your play style then uh yeah this is the one for you but let's get straight into it so the basic thing is your gauge over here which is the dps version is adder's thing that builds up at the bottom i think that's only in combat and then the other ones the ones that you use for heal is called adder's skull and those build up out of combat as well so that's pretty nice but um, yeah, so you'll be managing those and using those to do a lot of your heals and a lot of your heals are instant as well. But let's get straight to it. So for your DPS rotation, well actually you don't really have a rotation. So for start, it's your healer. So Cardia, you'll put on the, the tank because when you, that Cardia buff, when you do damage with any of your DPS skills and they say over there, it gives the effect of Cardian, restores HP. How you apply Cardian is you click Cardia on your tank. It's like a dance, dance partner, but for... Or even if, if you're off tanks taking autos with the bosses like that or something like that. Whoever you want to heal constantly by doing DPS, you put your Cardia on. Which most of the time is the main tank. Especially when you're doing dungeons because it's the only tank. So you put that on and then when you do DPS. So see, it heals me there. And uh, that's your single target. Heals me. It's like just a constant heal all the time pretty much. And then this over here. Phlegma. That's your AoE. It also heals you. Your, your target. And then this one over here, Toxicon, that one you can only use in combat because it uses one of these uh, little thingamabobbers, the little things that only build up during combat. And that is really, really strong AoE. And then it's also healing, obviously, so that. And then this is your, like, Art of War. If you play Scholar, you just spam that pretty much. It's like a big AoE around you. And it also heals your, your target with this on it. So you can do a lot of healing just by damaging. But, um, yeah, so that's... It's a really damage orientated healer, which is pretty fun. I like that. And then this over here, your your crazy buffs your your diosis. It turns it into a dot. So you would start by doing that. And I'm not sure if that actually does like a little regen on your target. Let's see when it picks damage. Damage? No, it doesn't. Okay, so it doesn't do regen damage, but it does heal you on the first application. So as soon as you apply, you see there it does a little heal, the same as like a normal diosis heal. And uh, yeah, that's that. If you buff that for now. And then if you do buff it as well, it makes your... This is your single target heal diagnosis. And if you buff it, it's like an adloquium. Like a shitty adloquium. <laughs> it's a shield, pretty much. So if you buff it with Eucrasia, it becomes a shield. And if you don't buff it, then it's just a flat single target heal. So you've got to cast. And then same with your AoE prognosis. is like your medical one. Which is, that's an AoE heal, and then if you buff it with your Crazier, it becomes an AoE shield. And it's instant cast, so it's really, if you miss something and there's like really big damage coming out and you forgot to buff or shield, there you go, just smack that one and then instant cast the shield. And uh, then moving on to other skills that use uh, this one of here, Prognosis. No, that's your AoE. Okay, yeah. So, do you, do you I cannot say these things, so you'll just have to read them for yourself. This uses one of your Adder's thingamabobbers, one of your stacks. And it's pretty much like a, like that heal on the Scholar, what's it, the instant cast one. That uses the stack, but uh, yeah, it's instant cast. The only bad thing about it is, is a projectile. So if that like someone's really far away from you and you got to throw it at them, it takes like a second or so to travel to them. So they might die in that time, but hopefully not. But uh, yeah, that is your instant cast and it does give you back MP as well. All of your skills that use one of these little thingies give you back MP. So you kind of want to use them as often as possible. Well, you don't, well, not as often as possible. You don't want to like waste them. But you don't ever want to be full. Like, see, right now I'm not regening any, so there's no point. So, what I would suggest then is this one of here, Torosholi. This one also is a single target heal. It's really big, 700 potency, and it reduces the target's damage taken by 10%, and it lasts for 15 seconds. So that's like a little cooldown for the tank pretty much so you just if you're ever gonna get full on these just chuck it up like on the tank that's what it looks like there and then yeah it takes your damage reduce but 15 seconds is a long time like you'll just about get another one up before that runs out 
Uh, so you can pretty much have that rolling on your tank most of the time. There'll be a little bit of downtime. You see there, one, one second gone, and look, it's almost back. So, like, it's got a small bit of downtime on it, but yeah, don't ever let your thing pull up, because then you're just wasting resources, pretty much. All right, moving on. Ixocholi, this is your AoE heal. It's pretty much like Indom from Scholar, but uh, yeah, it does have a cooldown, so you can't spam it with this, and so does the Koroshole. But this one doesn't have a cooldown, that just costs. And uh, yeah, so that one you'll be using most of the time. And then this one you pr pretty much want to use all the time. I just see now that it's actually got a 45 second recast. And that's about how long it takes for you to build up one of these. I think a little bit quicker. So that you can pretty much use on cooldown on the tank at all times. And uh, yeah, that's really good for that. And then we'll move it on to Icarus. This is your mobility sp skill and it's really awesome. You can do it to enemies and you can do it to allies. So this is what it looks like. You just charge them pretty much with little wings. Well, that's your little flying thingamabobbers. And yeah, that's your ability, plain and simple. All right, then moving on to Pepsi. Pepsi, let's call it Pepsi, for lack of a better word. And I don't like pronouncing things. <laughs> so restore own HP and the HP of nearby top target members were, and it removes one of these shields. And if it does remove the shield, then it gives them bigger heal. And if, wait, no, if it doesn't remove the shield, they don't get any heal. So pretty much use this now. Dodge, nothing happens. So to use that skill Pepsi, or Pepsis, if you want to pronounce it properly, you have to put on a shield first with either one of these. So you could do AoE shield or a single target shield, and then that will just heal them a little bit. It's not really much, but I mean, if they've got a shield left over on them from something, and you just need a bit of a heal, then smack it on. There you go, Pepsi, eat, free heal. Doesn't cost anything, it just takes the shield away, whatever's left. And uh, yeah, moving on to next, Asuna, that's just basic, you know that does. And Zoe, this is a really good one that you'll be using quite often. Well, not really, because it has a two minute cooldown. But uh, this just makes your next heal double. Like it, it, well not double, but it increases it by 50%. So it increases by a lot. And this does also work on your shields. So if you buff them with your crazier and that, and then your shield, you get a much bigger shield. And if that crit, it would have been even bigger. And then, yeah, for example, now I've got a shield and I can show you Pepsis. And then there you go, Pepsis does a little heal too if you have the shield left over. So if you've got a really big, I don't know, AoE coming up, and or if the AoE's already passed and you need like a tier 3 pretty much, just like a really quick big heal, all you do is shield them, and then they've already been healed by a little bit by that, and then you hit Pepsis, so it just pulls them up even more. And then moving on to this, Phyces 2, that to me is pretty much Whispering Dawn from Scholar, but a little bit better. I think the potency is better, or maybe it actually might be a little bit worse. But yeah, it's free, doesn't cost anything, and uh, it's on a 1 minute cooldown. Your potency, and that's about it. So it does a little AoE heal, and then it applies the regen. So that's just pretty much Whispering Dawn. So I'll throw that out whenever there's a little bit of... AoE damage once it's just like a little bit trickling in. So if you have a bleed or something on a whole group, check that up. And uh, yeah, moving on to other skills. What have we got up here? So Sat Satoria. Soteria. This increases your DPS healing by 50%. So it increases all your Cardian effects. And Cardian effects is when you deal damage and you heal your Cardia target. So if you check that up on an AoE pool, you see, remember I was doing 1200 heals before? 1,800 heals now. So it just buffs your, your damage healing pretty much. And that's all there is to that. It's on a relatively short cooldown, a minute and a half. So you can use it on pretty much all the trash pools in dungeons when you'll need it the most. And then moving on. Let's see. Hamia. This is one of my favorite abilities. It's like a really, really nice defensive on a tank. Because you chuck it up on your target. And then it grants them five stacks of the shield pretty much. And every time the shield gets broken, it just applies another stack. So pretty much it can be broken five times, and it heals them a little bit every time. So you see that's how the shield goes up. See it's got five stacks over there. And the stacks are consumed to restore Hamia. So when this Hamia breaks off, it's a magical barrier, then it restores it again. So you can pretty much get that shield five times. It's just when the tank pulls a big trash ball, you chuck it up on the tank, and it just like, it's free shielding for a little while when that like breaks and goes. And then moving on to Kirishole. Now this is really good. It's pretty much sacred soil from scholars. But instead of placing it and only being active when people stand in it, you just hit it now and it does a big range around you and then people have the buff. They can walk around wherever so you don't need to get them to stand in your sacred soil anymore. So that's great. Can't argue with that. 
And Egeria, that's your res, pretty much. So, yeah, that's all there is to, to Sage for now, TM. Don't be fooled by the basicness of this guide. But, uh, yeah, that is level 70 basic bitch Sage. I hope you guys enjoy it and it helps you guys in your leveling process. And I would really like if you guys comment and rate and subscribe to the video. I'm trying to get to a thousand subs by, by the end of the year. And that would help me so much and help the channel. And just be awesome. But anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you. Run free and dive into the sky. Hear the wind crying out its prayer. While we're so ashamed to be.